So this is James's dinner for January the 12th, 2019, and uh, it's tabbouleh with pomegranate arrows and sauerkraut, baked potato with alfredo sauce, and this is the roasted red pepper bread that's like the Kalamata olive one, and then just tomato soup. And he's having some Boston cream cake, and I put some extra stuff there if he wants it. And um, we tried this stuff, and it's pretty good. So, I mean, um, neither one of us really should be eating it. James is lactose intolerant, and uh, this doesn't go well with me. It's not lactose intolerant, but it's, it makes my nose run, and um, it makes me bloody. So, anyway. But I love it. So anyway, I'm feeling a little bit um, under the weather. I think that's part of why I was, uh, why I had the headache yesterday after the bath. But the, most of it would have been the bath was too long. But um, oh good, I did remember to bring in utensils. So that always helps. So I have my my warming monkey here. Just a spider. There we go. Let's stay nice and warm. Although it's a nice warm day, so it's, out. it's pretty good. James actually suggested having the dinner. I was just like, oh, I just want to lay around. You know how you feel when you're not feeling well. But um, somebody left us a some sort of a dog bed igloo thingy on the pile over there. I don't know. Who did that? But oh, I'll show you something. <laughs> Somebody else is enjoying the sun here. Here. Right there. Because I was meaning to throw this chair. Because I didn't want to have to clean it up. And, um, but yeah, over in the garbage pile over there. I don't think you can see, but there's a a dog bed. I don't know. I wish people wouldn't leave things, honestly. I, I appreciate it, but oh, like yesterday just after our deck dinner, a guy came by who had left the bicycle in my yard, hidden in my yard. And uh, like I he was, I just caught him in the yard. I would just, I was just packing the stuff in. I came back out and I'm like, what are you doing here? And he said, I'm looking for my bicycle. And I was like, the bicycle that you stole and hid in my yard? I took it out of my yard and anyway. So, um, Anyway, Blacklist, the complete fifth season. I talked about it a little bit yesterday. I was saying, just watch it. And um, there is one point in the show where, like, there's a couple points that are, it's really worth watching. Um, honestly, it was, and the, the season finale. Like, wow. Because, it. I mean, it was exciting up to that. And then, anyway. So I'm not going to give that away. Um, but there's one point where, you know, the little uh, skinny Elizabeth Keene character, played by Megan Boone, um, she's packing a full-grown, a large man. Um, there's no way. I'm not going to say how she was packing them or anything like that, but there's, it's just not even possible. I remember when my dad uh, was dying of cancer and um, anyway, he was just scrawny, like there was, he was just bones and uh, I thought for sure, like I, he was in the bedroom, in the bed and I felt bad for him being there. The, um, my mom had managed to get a hospital bed and um, 
help, like, putting him up to feed him and stuff like that. So, anyway, um, we, we were thinking, well, where are we going to set this up? And finally, I don't know, some, I guess, just discussions or whatever, we decided the dining room would be the best place. And so that's where we ended up putting Dad, but, um, because, I don't know, I felt bad too. I didn't like him in the bedroom because he was away, you know, he was, he was just shut away. And I wanted him to feel like he was a part of our lives. So, um, but anyway, so I tried to pick him up because I thought, well, for sure that'd be easy. I mean, there's nothing left of him. But, you know, so I tried to pick him up like this and we were both on the floor right away. <laughs> I, I couldn't pick him up. So it was like holding him like the... Anyway. A few of us together we managed to get him to the bed in the dining room. <laughs> on the floor. Not very professionally but we made it there. And he was laughing about it, because it's kind of funny. I don't know. I, I honestly thought I could do it. But, night school. Kevin Hart. Wow, was that bad? So bad. It was pretty bad. So bad. They misused him. I think he's fairly funny. He misused him. It was written by him. And a, oh my, well that's a problem. And produced yeah. by him. I don't so. think he's uh, that... Kind I don't of actually a talent. care for him, but oh, James yeah. likes Kevin Hart. I Hart's find so him weird. reasonably funny. Yeah. It's just not when he's writing for himself. But yeah, there's a lot of unbelievable things in Blacklist, the complete fifth season. But you, if it's entertaining enough, you just let these things go. You know, the things that you catch that are like, wow, why did they write that in? Or whatever. Not make that more believable. But it was entertaining enough that it's just like, just look past it, it's okay. Um, Rescue in the Philippines is, well, I didn't know the Philippines let so many Jewish people in. Or about the you? only, I had no idea. I didn't know about it. I thought every country closed their doors. Yeah. Good for the Filipinos. Yeah. And so, I mean, people should really consider this when they're thinking, oh, well, which countries people should we be more open to immigration um from maybe maybe filipino people or well they let the jews in they should be let in here some other countries that didn't let the jews in i haven't Ireland. actually tried this this way yet i'm going to count how many so i leave james half because we, we both like these things I'll leave you a little more. I'll just take five. Let's see. One more. Ah! That's you can eat them if you want to, or whenever you want. To. These are yours. just found it interesting because they had to put this, see the French on, to sell it here, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where come from? I don't know, it's delicious though. It is probably They're the best cheese crackers I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's so a whole bad. lot of cheese. Yeah. Portland, Oregon. How I was eating them the last time is I'd take a bite of apple and then I'd take a, one of those. It worked out really It's a good well. idea. Mm -hmm. Little basic, little acid. 
Well, I guess that's what I'm doing here, too. This is trip. Yeah. Little yin yang. No, it's funny that that guy came by yesterday for the bicycle because when, like, I, I filmed the bicycle, I didn't put it on the vlog, but when I moved it into the alley, I filmed it and I um, talked about it, how he'd, uh, I'd left a pie out and he'd, he'd walked a ways with the pie and he'd scooped it looked like a hand scoop right so I don't think he had anything but his hands and he'd scooped a uh, scoop full of pie filling out and presumably ate it because it was not anywhere but and then he decided he'd leave the pie the rest of the pie <laughs> and might as well just have thrown it on the ground Who'd want it? well he did That's oh. how he left the rest of the pie because oh, wow. he walked a ways with it and then decided yeah I don't want that either how far did he stomp into the yard the other day? Well, he went right back to where, because he'd hit it back. Um, what a moron. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So you're the one who put it on the edge of the. Yeah, uh, I put uh, it. No. I don't want it in my yard. Mm -hmm. No. I don't want stolen stuff in my yard and people no. thinking that I'm a. Exactly. Well. That's so, why I cased anyway, it here so we So get yeah, the blame. I'm like, it was obviously stolen. And he's like, no, it's my son's bike. Yeah, and it's right. like, really? And you hid it in my yard? Why would you do that? You know, like, yeah. that's not believable at all. Mm. But, and it's funny because I, I know also that he was the person who ate some of my pie. He threw it on the floor. What so a sleaze bucket. Or on the ground. I don't know. So I, I, you know, it was just funny seeing the face of the person who was responsible for this. No shame, eh? No. No. And he didn't seem to want to go. I was like, you have to leave now and never come back. And he's like, you don't have to be such a... After he's trespassed. Really? People are amazing. Okay. Amazing. But were you saying some cherry thieves were getting huffy with you one time? Nothing like tomato soup with those yummy crackers. Wow, they're fantastic. I'm not paid by the company in any way. Although somebody did give me a free bag of their crackers. Boy, I would like to have more. <laughs> but um, I, I can't. I have no way of making that happen. But yeah, if you're a cheese lover, like we both are, unfortunately, I think everyone is. Mm -hmm. Cheds. They're perfect. Yeah, I had a dream that this I had a dream that I was on I was walking which I never walked there, but um that I was walking on the north side of Sixth um, Avenue by the London Road Market. And um this guy in a great big white SUV uh, stopped on the other side of the road and he's like hey come here and so it was daylight and I wasn't afraid so I went over and it's just a dream 
and he moves into the passenger side and he says come on get in drive we can go wherever you want to go and I'm like oh I'm fine walking because I didn't know this guy right and he's like no seriously it's fine wherever you want to go so I big say, temptation for the average woman yeah a white SUV I know yeah. so I decide <coughs> okay I will so I get in and rather than turning uh, I guess south to, to go on 13th there which would have been the most natural because I mean that's what lane I'm in I decide to signal over and get in to turn um, north on 13th so I do that he seems a little bit confused that I decided to do that but what I wanted to do was um, get a red light photo of me in the vehicle with him just in case he's uh, turns out to be a murderer or something so um, and obviously if he has a great big white SUV he has money to pay the ticket so <laughs> that's what I was thinking anyway so my dream I'm like yeah that's what I'm gonna do so that's what I did and I don't know if there's red light cameras there but there should be it's a pretty major intersection 13th and 6th but anyway so that's what my well, logic 13th was 13th and 6th so. yeah so um then he's like um just stop anywhere um I I just have to we're low on fuel and I have to switch over the tank or something like that so I look at the fuel gauge and it looks fine and I don't know what that means but so I decide to pull over um, near my home actually oh they must be picking up trees to take to the recycler that's a really nice thing to do I've never seen that before. I guess they're looking for trees that have been left out. Yeah. I don't know if they're taking them to the dump. They might be using them for themselves. Oh, for wood or something. I don't know. We tried to burn our Christmas tree once in our, um, our wood burning stove that we had. And um, it's not a good idea. We were really scared of burning the house down. This was when I was a little kid. Um, not a smoke? No, the needles really. They just, the oh, they go up like crazy. Yeah. They're not good. So, that was maybe not a good idea. It's better, like, out in a bonfire or something of Christmas trees out in the yard. That Maybe that's all right. Mm. <sighs> so, anyway. So, um, I pulled over. And I was trying not to obviously look at what the guy was doing. But I thought that it was a bomb that he had. And he was saying go wherever and and then he said to me like I was like oh well you seem busy I'm gonna go and he's like no I seriously we can go wherever you want this is your day and um, I can give you a thousand dollars right now to spend wherever you want to go it's it's all for you and um, so I'm like a thousand dollars what non not for pro or profit organization can I donate this <laughs> because mm, I don't know he didn't seem like the kind of person that would want the money to go to that um, but uh, in my dream and maybe that's I guess I was profiling in my dream but then I, I think he had a, a bomb in the car that he was wanting me to set off some like he wants me to be oh also in my dream at the intersection a, a police car pulled into the intersection and looked at me driving and then smiled and waved like it's okay and so I think he was looking for this guy right driving mm -hmm. and since that's why the guy picked me up because he was being it's a pretty good idea yeah it, it was a good idea for a potential terrorist to pick up a very harmless looking woman like myself you could make a I should movie write this <laughs> yeah I know it was a good dream for like creativity but Anyway, so, then, um, well, somebody might. Somebody might watch this and make a movie into it. But anyway, so, the I'd pulled over in this, uh, he was fiddling with something, <coughs> and I think it was a bomb. And I think what he wanted me to do was go pl someplace like a mall or something, you know, to set it off, right? Yeah, funny thing is, Because that's know, why like, he was asking uh, me, or offering uh, me the money. Yeah, flunkies who went after the World Trade Center yeah. twice and were pretty successful second time. 
uh, they could hit a lot of different places. That's one mm -hmm. of the uh, problems. You know, a lot of places are vulnerable. This really isn't green tea. It's um, water because <laughs> I have a little bit of extra, like the green tea that it's not dissolved into the thing or whatever, and it's at the bottom. So I decided to put some water. That's not very fun. So you're done your dinner. Uh, I gave you well, way too I'll much. Eat right food. now, yeah. Uh, so uh, well, it'll be. I'll be eating what's the brunch in the afternoon. Mm. Uh, a lunch? No. A lunch and dinner. Dinner. Oh, I'm too sick, sick to think. But anyway, um, I wouldn't recommend this rescue in the Philippines just because, honestly, I get so bored of watching these things that it's it's like just give me a bunch of details um, that rather than making like one movie about this Philippine thing, make like one movie that this is just oh by the way the Philippines rescue da da da, -da or whatever. And that's good enough for me. I don't have to watch 55 minutes of just this. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. I'm learning some stuff. Like, uh, mm -hmm. Quezon City was named after a guy called Manuel Quezon. He's headed up to the Philippines for a while and all this sort of stuff. So, you can pick up... Uh, my dream was way more entertaining than this. I know, it's not entertaining, but that's the way history is. And that's my when dreams. When it is entertaining, it's the kind my of stuff that you end up with on the History Channel, which is the Hitler Channel, channel yeah. as uh, Silas used to say. And uh, But yeah, where he had the bomb in the back of the, of the SUV, it was like just behind the passenger seat, he would lift it up, um, what looked like the black blackish gray carpet stuff on the bottom and uh, it was right there so I don't know if people really put their pretty bombs sneaky, there pretty freaky well you know they like having bands uh, the idiots who uh, tried to blow up uh, uh, the World Trade Center in 1993 uh, took it in a van right? yeah because I hadn't even noticed anything was there until he lifted up the carpet yeah. and so uh, I bet it was a that. particular what, what sort of rental agencies are there down here? So Hertz? Vehicles. Maybe Hertz? Is no, it wasn't Hertz. Hertz. It was another uh, thing. Anyway, the idiots, the Oklahoma City bombers, uh, rented the same outfit for their little van. Mm. And, of course, it's an indication, uh, you know, like, uh, that uh, actually it was the same outfit for both. It's just that they were using the uh, these uh, stupid militia guys for uh, front. So, yeah, that was Ramsey use of, for both of them. I wonder... Like, do you think, why would they use the same rental company? Or is that rental because company somehow involved and they have, like, high insurance no, on their it's vehicles? It's just, um, and you, you know, like, uh, criminals get a modus operandi, right? Mm -hmm. uh, serial uh, criminals, that's one of the ways they get caught. They do the same thing every time. It's right. like a ritual. I don't know. No. Anyway, uh, you got it here. You know, like, a, a woman exposed this, uh, a journalist uh, exposed the... Uh, I think it was in the 90s, uh, exposed the connections with, uh, at the very least, Ramzi Youssef, uh, who was basically uh, something like Al-Qaeda, and uh, it might well have involved the Iraqi military as well. The Iraqis uh, were uh, actually hanged with these kind of idiots. I mean, uh, the assumption that Saddam Hussein wouldn't uh, hang with Al-Qaeda because uh, they had it in for him is silly. That's, the assumption is that uh, Saddam Hussein was rational. He was a crazy, crazy, uh, we'll say idiot. I was going to say something else, but I didn't want to say that. Okay. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the entertainment. <laughs> I certainly enjoyed the day out here. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs>